Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, let's talk about Stream Builder. So the videos right now are kind of slowing down. They probably will continue to slow down unless something else happens. The reason is, is because in the very beginning, there seems to be a certain amount of information. And then once you get a little bit advanced, I notice that there is an all of a sudden a big, huge change of information. And there's this big chunk of information in between, which I don't really have. And that's why Stream Builder learning about it took a long time for me because I have all these other widgets and these other ideas down. But then if I look up for any type of documentation, any tutorials, people put this code that it's, it's super complicated. They're making these really big applications that I don't really understand how they work. And therefore, I had to put all these blocks together to figure out how to get from here to over here, and I couldn't really do it. So that's why I had to kind of figure this out for myself and document my, document my journeys, okay? So that's what's taking me so long, and I'm afraid that from now on, things are going to take a long time because I'm missing a huge chunk inside there. And the reason I'm missing it is because Nobody is documenting this chunk inside of here. So you just automatically have to know this, which I don't know how people do that. I really don't. Um, maybe they're just smart. Okay, so uh, I'll give them that. How they get, get from here to over here. But I'm certainly not getting there. So we'll have to do this the hard way. Okay. Anyway, what is Stream Builder? Well, first of all, what is a stream? We talked about Future Builder in the last couple of videos ago, right? So what we said for our future was, I need this value, okay, but I don't have it now because there's going to be a latency. So if there's any value that's going to have a latency to it, it's not going to happen now. It's going to happen later on. That's a future. So I'm going to ask the internet for this value. There's going to be a latency because it has to ask the internet. The internet's going to get it and download it because that's going to take a long time. This is, Dart defines this as being a future, okay? So... What happens if I need more than one piece of information? So I'm here and I ask the internet and the internet starts sending me bits and bits of information itself. That by definition is a stream, okay? So sending more than one information from the future or in the future, you will get more than one bit of information. And we've done this in the past. For example, we've done the listen method, right? So there's several ways of getting streams, accessing it. There's multiple different ways in which you use stream, but that's the idea. You get some information and you send it out and then you get that information more than one chunk of information, all right, at, at different times. That's the key at different times. So for example, if I have a counter that goes from zero to a thousand and when the counter hits, let's just say 250, I want something to happen over here. So you have to listen to the stream that's sending out information constantly. And then when it hits the 250, 249, 250, it's, it's going to trigger this thing to actually do something. So that's the listen method, right? It's listening to the stream, but it does something. After that something happens, then the stream, listening to the stream is closed, right? It's not listening any longer. It doesn't really care anymore. So, so that's one way to deal with the stream. Another way to deal with the stream is to not close it, to constantly be opening to it, right? So if I keep listening to the stream, because maybe this is going to, instead of counting, it's going to tell the weather, right? So if it's telling the weather, it goes up and down, the temperature outside goes up and down, I want to be able to tell is the temperature up, is it down, and I want to listen the whole time. So that's not going to be one of those streams where I'm going to hear, oh, it's 78 degrees outside, stop listening right? I'm going to keep going and, and keep going ongoing. So that's the ideas of the streams themselves. And by the way, I under one of my video lists themselves, um, I did go over streams, but I had to stop it just because, again, the documentation, I'm having trouble with it, and I couldn't go into too much details about the streams. I really hope to go back on some of these things. I know I say that for everything. Go back and readdress some of these things because I think there's huge gaping bits of information from our um, uh, in my knowledge, but at, at the same time, I don't know. I'm still struggling here, okay? So if we keep this the idea of a stream in mind, it's going to be the same thing a stream builder as a future builder. So we're going to have to create a stream, right? And let's create a simple stream. Stream int some data, name of the stream, async for, uh oh, for the async, it, for async, it's going to be a future 
for with async asterisk is going to be a stream. Okay, that's just the syntax itself. And then we say yield, not return. If you return, it means you give something back and you're done. That's the future, right? But if you keep sending information, it's yield more information, yield more information. So yielding is the, um, the proper term. But then I'm going to have, what I want to do is, wait a second, send information. Wait a second, send information. And keep sending information that way, OK? And I'm going to say yield stream.periodic duration one second. And then I'm going to say int a, so integer a, this by, by definition starts by 0. This is just a counter. And then here it's going to return a plus plus forward, OK? So what is this doing? I have a stream, and it's going to have an integer that's going to be sent into the stream. For some strange reason, I don't exactly know why you can't just use this, why you can't just get this right here and just put it outside of its own function. I don't actually know. There, there's some reason behind it. But what I'll have to do is yield this. But notice the asterisk here. Yield, when you yield something, so for example, if I yielded, I don't know, the number one, okay? Yield number one, it's going to send the number one out in, in information. So it's going to be a stream wrapped around an integer, just right here, a stream wrapped around an integer. But if I have stream.periodic and I send more bits of information, what I'm actually doing is, let's get rid of this. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be sending a stream of a stream of an integer. All right, so this thing is returning a stream of an integer, and then I'm wrapping it around with another stream of, in and of itself, and that makes it, you're having several layers. So in order to yield this, in case you're, and, and I think the purpose behind that is that if you stream multiple streams, so you have a stream within a stream, okay, I, I hope I'm not losing you because I think I'm losing myself here, if you have a stream of a stream, you have to remove the stream, get the chewy inside goodness, and wrap it around the um, stream there. Okay, so yield this returns this. So this yield asterisk strips the stream away and just gives the int, but then the int is wrapped around the stream and sent out. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. So y plain yield. It's going to yield the stream of the stream of the int, yield asterisks. It's going to remove the stream here and just use the stream here, but this is going to return here every one second. Okay? And notice that you were only returning one thing here every one second. So it's a return, not a yield. All right? I hope that makes sense. So that returns, but then it activates this again. And then it activates this again. So that's why it's more than one time, whereas the whole thing is yielded. This whole thing is yielded because it, it's, a, it's an ongoing releasing of information. All right, so I hope the distinction is clear. If it isn't, leave a comment in the comment section, okay? So that's my stream and the long-winded version of it. So here's the stream builder. So same app as before. Notice it's a stateless widget. I'm not exactly sure why it's stateless. Um, I think the reason why it's not stateless is because there is no set state. So it's because a state is constantly changing, there's no set state, it can go ahead and be stateless. It's a little counterintuitive though. So I'm, I'm not exactly sure about that, but I, I think that's the logic behind it. Now, initial data, it's just gonna have working right inside of here. And then under the stream builder, what's the name of the stream? Some data, right inside here, right? And then builder, it's context, and then it's going to be snapshot. This is the stream value, the value of the stream right there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it nice and simple. Bottom navigation bar right here, and then floating action button right here. And I'm going to make the icon icons.ac unit just because it was easy. It was the first thing I clicked on. All right. And the reason I didn't put it right inside of here is because then I have to do contain in the body container and center and all that stuff. And I wanted to make it nice and clean and easy to read. All right. A little harder to read here, a little easier to read here, just so that we can f find out what we're doing. So on the bottom navigation bar, I want the text and I want it to say snapshot.data. So get the data out of that snapshot and turn it to a string, right? Snapshot.data is an int, 
right? And change it to string. And here, hang on one quick second. I could change it to runtime type. And then here it's going to be snapshot.data.toString, right? Once I push on the button. So icon on pressed, if I push on this button, it's going to print snapshot.data.toString, so it should print it out here. Okay? So let's go ahead and run this. Uh, ooh, that did not work well. What happened there? Uh, dart bottom run type type. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, I gotta change that to string. Okay. Let's try that again. Okay, so that's an int, just like I said. So snapshot dot data, snapshot remove the string from it, and that's an int, and then to string, and then when I push this button, it prints ten. Why? Because 10 seconds passed. Let's wait a few more seconds, print on it again, and it's 16. So you notice the value right inside of here, as I'm pressing it, changes. So how about if I just go here, working, zero, did you see that? Let's do that again. Working, zero, one, and now it's gonna count. So notice that I can change the screen because of something that's asynchronous, number one, and number two, it's a stream that's constantly letting information out on top of it. Before it was synchronous, I'd have to, and this is synchronous, right? So this is synchronous because I push the button and it prints, but it's asynchronous in terms of what is the value that's actually being printed. All right, so that's a neat implementation here, uh, and it makes it nice and simple for streams. We could make this a whole lot more complicated, like if the stream isn't available or something like that, but this is just kind of one of those proof of concept things. Let's just see that this is how a stream works, stream builder specifically works, and we can build on top of that in the future, okay? So I hope that was helpful for you. It was really helpful for me, and maybe we can move forward a little faster next time, but we'll have to wait and see. Thanks.